John Major was a Scottish philosopher, much admired in his day and an acknowledged influence on all the great thinkers of the time. He was a very renowned teacher and his works much collected, and frequently republished across Europe. His sane conservatism and his skeptical logical approach to the study of texts such as Aristotle or the Bible, were less prized in the subsequent age of humanism where a more committed, and linguistic-slash-literary, approach prevailed. His influence in logic, science, politics, church, and international law can be traced across the centuries, and appear decidedly modern, and it is only in the modern age that he is not routinely dismissed as a scholastic. His Latin style did not help a circumflex he thought that it is of more moment to understand right and clearly to lay down the truth of any matter than to use eloquent language. Nevertheless, it is to his writings, including their dedications, that we owe much of our knowledge of the everyday facts of Major's life a circumflex for example his shortness of stature. He was an extremely curious and very observant man, and used his experience as a circumflex of earthquakes in Paisley, thunder in Glasgow, storms at sea, eating oat cakes in northern England a circumflex to illustrate the more abstract parts of his logical writings. John Major was born about 1467 in Glagorny, near North Berwick where he received his early education. It was at nearby Haddington, East Lothian. Scotland, where he attended grammar school. He was probably taught by the town schoolmaster George Litzer, who was, according to Major, although a circumspect man in other ways, more severe than was just in beating boys. If it had not been for the influence of his mother, Major says he would have left, but he and his brother stayed on and were successful. According to him, Haddington was the town which fostered the beginning of my studies, and in whose kindly embrace I was nourished as a novice with the sweetest milk of the art of grammar. He says he stayed in Haddington to a pretty advanced age, and he remembers the sound of the King James III's bombardment of the nearby castle of Dunbar, which was in 1479. He also remembers the comet which was supposed to have foretold the king's defeat at Sorcheburn which was in 1488. However, it was in 1490, he reports, that he first left the paternal hearth. In 1490, probably under the influence of Robert Cockburn, another Haddington man, destined to be an influential bishop, he decided to go to Paris, to study among the great numbers of Scots there at the time. It is not known whether he attended university in Scotland as a student a circumflex there are no matriculation records of him, and he claimed never to have seen the university town of St. Andrews, Fife as a young man. He seems to have decided to prepare for Paris at Cambridge in England. He says that in 1492 he attended God's House, which later became Christ's College. He remembers the bells a circumflex on great feast days, I spent half the night listening to them a circumflex, but was obviously well prepared, as he left for Paris after three terms. In 1493 he matriculated in the University of Paris, France, then the foremost university in Europe. He studied at the COLLA tilde diaresis gisum barb and took his Bachelor of Arts degree there in 1495 followed by his Master's degree in 1496. There were many currents of thought in Paris, but he was heavily influenced, as were fellow Scots such as Lawrence of Linders by the nominalist and empiricist approach of John Buridan. He became a student master in arts in the COLLA tilde diaresis G. de Montaigu in 1496 and began the study of theology under the formidable Jan Standonk. He consorted with scholars of later renown, some from his hometown, Robert Walterston, and his home country, but mostly they were the luminaries of the age, including Erasmus, whose reforming enthusiasms he shared, Rabrilus and Reginald Pole. In the winter of 1497 he had a serious illness, from which he never completely recovered. He had never had dreams before, but ever afterwards he was troubled by dreams, migraine, colic and excessive sleepinesses. In 1499, he moved to the College of Navarre. In 1501, he
he received his degree of Bachelor of Sacred Theology, and in 1505 his logical writings were collected and published for the first time. In 1506 he was licensed to teach theology, and was awarded the degree of Doctor of Sacred Theology on 11 November that year. He taught at the Colla Tilde Diaresis G. de Montaigu, and also the prestigious Sorbonne, where he served on many commissions.